Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another DC Multiverse news update. Got a couple new figures, new characters, give or take, to talk about today. A lot of Batman, so just brace yourself for the bats, right? We got a lot to talk about there. It wouldn't be a DC Multiverse video if we didn't have a lot of Batmans to talk about. And... For the most part, in the recent releases of McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, uh, this is the most Batman heavy wave there has been. Maybe kind of sort of minus the Dark Knight Rises, but hey, you know what? There's some fun ones to be had, and if you've missed a few of these or you've been holding off for this particular color scheme, well, these might be right up your alley. Just before we get started, as usual... If you are interested in any of these figures, I will have affiliate pre-order links down in the description below. When applicable. Some might go up, some might not be up yet. It all depends on when you see this video. I know. But just check the links and see if they're there. And yes, I do update them. Now, first and foremost, Walmart will be continuing on with their DC versus Vampires line. And of course, we're getting Nightwing, King of the Vampires, for those of you who haven't read DC vs. Vampires, which I don't think comic books is everyone's strong suit these days, right? <laughs> Unless we're talking about old school comics, 70s, 80s, 90s, and then you get up to the thousands and you're like, hmm, okay, that sounds uh, interesting. Now, Nightwing, and just in looking at the photos, right, he looks a lot more zombie-ish than he does vampire. Right, that's how I kind of see it. Does that work for me? I really don't mind either way. I kind of like the whole monstrous DC versus vampires line. I think it's fun. I'm one of those where I like zombified superheroes, right? Marvel zombies, DC zombies. Now we got vampires. So, yes, for me and how I see this, that's definitely a lot more zombie than vampire. Do I mind? No. Not at all. Does it really adhere to the comic book source material? Not at all. So again, for those of you who are like, wait, this doesn't match up. Essentially, because DC versus Vampires is not that interesting in which I would want character, like actual characters made into action figures from that. Whereas they're just taking prior release DC multiverse, giving them a new head portrait and slapping some blood on them. And I am totally okay with that because that's, kind of the fun of it. I don't want actual figures of DC versus vampires, if that makes any sense. I just want zombified, vampirified heroes. There you go. So we're getting that Nightwing again. But hey, he's got a fancy new blood-soaked, teethed-out head with the heart of Bruce Wayne, I might add. That's cool. That's a nice touch. You could just say he's got a heart, right? But in DC versus Vampires, he punches through Bruce Wayne's chest and rips out his heart. So I guess that's a nod to that. Also comes with his Escrima sticks. I, I don't know why. I can't stand the name of those things. <laughs> just call him his night sticks or some Escrima sticks. I, I know that's what they're called, but it's just such a Dumb name. Anyways, here's everything all packaged up, ready to go. Gold label, Walmart exclusive coming soon. You'll probably see this very, very soon. There will also be another Wave Mate 2, right, for the Walmart exclusive in the form of the Flash. I'm not going to post the photos just yet because it hasn't officially been released, revealed by McFarlane Toys. So just wait for that. But essentially, it's a gold label Wally West Flash. Right, so stay tuned for more on that. Next up, we have pre-orders for the main line, which means it'll go everywhere. None of this, I have to hop to specific stores and find it. Remember the SDCC blue Nightfall Batman? And then they had a subsequent just everywhere kind of release, but the San Diego Comic-Con one had a little bit of black on the mask, which is the superior one, just saying it's really cool. Anyways, you have the gray and black Nightfall Batman. Who saw this one coming? No one, I'm sure. I know a lot of you in the comments like to write that. I totally called that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for any Batman going forward in DC Multiverse, you'd probably get a blue one, a black one, a zebra stripe one. You get the idea, right? So, this Nightfall Batman, black and gray. Not much to say on this guy. It is a really nice figure. I think that it's a great body type for Batman. 
So that's really it. That's all the newness here. If you don't like the blue and gray, you, you got a black and gray. Although, what would have been cool to kind of update this figure would be to give them new parts and pieces, right? Instead of just doing a straight repaint, pack something new in the box. Give them an unmasked Bruce Wayne. That makes me go, I absolutely need this. Because to be honest with you, I'm really on a blue and gray Batman kick, right? Black and gray, sure, that's totally cool. And a lot of you are gonna go, oh yeah, that's my Batman, uh, you're one, blah, blah, blah. It's it's just a black and gray Batman. Put something new in the box, give him a bat grapnel, but give him an unmasked head portrait, something like that, to make those of us who have a million Batman go, God, ah. Yeah, I need that one now. So, again, if you are interested in a black and gray Nightfall Batman, you could go and grab him with my links down below. Next up, Batman. We got another Batman. I told you this is going to be Batman heavy. We have the Detective Comics number 27 first appearance Batman. And I know a lot of people are already saying, yeah, why has he got purple gloves? Well, you've never read a comic book in your life, apparently. Yeah, this is what Batman looked like in his very first appearance. The ears, the purple gloves, not really the belt. There are things, again, where you're like, it kind of works. Eh, I see that they kind of put together parts and pieces. So this is essentially going to be like the year two body type, right? The one that they did, the giant hush sort of style, that kind of thing. I don't mind that for this particular look of Batman. This Batman back in the day was a brawler, right? He was a bigger dude, and that's what I think of for this specific version of Detective Comics number 27, Batman. The gloves really could have used some work. I like seeing the element of the little tuft of the glove. They don't have that. It's just a hand that they repainted. Also, he does come with a wrench. I like that. That's a nice nod to Detective Comics number 27. Does he come with hands to hold it? No. Why? What happened there? Who thought that that was a good idea? Why would you do that? You have an arsenal of hands. You couldn't give him one hand to hold the blue wrench? Head portrait's pretty good. Also, did I mention he has a wired cape? There's a lot of great things happening here. I'm just going to say. My minor grievances, they are minor but it would be things done to help elevate the figure, right? Things that you go, why does that look so cheapy and ineffective, right? And that's really where McFarlane is kind of hitting this mark all the time where we go, dang, that looks good. But wait, there's an integral element missing. Or why is that the way it is? Or why did they use that body type with the A for Aquaman on his shoulder, right? It's things like that where you go, this is not helping things. This is making people go, yeah, no thanks, right? So there's a lot of great things happening here, but there are elements where I go, oh, man, you, you're almost there. There's so much coolness happening here. Like, I love that head portrait. That's great. And the wired cape, that looks even better. But the fact that he comes with a weapon that he can't even hold, what are you thinking? Come on, let's do better here. Also, don't be surprised if you see a platinum variant for this one, just saying, wink, wink. So again, if you want Detective Comics number 27 Batman, you can go ahead and pre-order him now. There's lots of different ways they could have done this figure. This is like, yeah, here he is. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's there and it's not. But for me, the number one pick, the one that I absolutely have to have, can't wait to have, is the Knight's End Azrael. And this is where you start calling him Azrael and you stop calling him Nightfall Batman, right? Just for me, at least. But this is when Jean-Paul Valley has gone off the deep end, right? He thinks he's Batman. He has perfected, quote unquote, his armor. He is so armored up it make no sense anymore, right? So he gets into a fight. He's got the blue armor, right? Falls in the fire, comes out, cleansed water. You get the idea. And now his armor is red. And this is, let's say, like the final form of Jean-Paul Valley, Night's End, Batman. Not a lot of people talk about Night's End, right? The three-part storyline. It's always Nightfall. I think that that was the most interesting. Night's End... It's a beautiful story throughout, right? It really ends and makes you go, that's why we need Batman, 
Like, you get it. It really brought people back to Batman. And it was a really well-executed, long storyline. But you get a figure like this, who is reusing parts and pieces from the Nightfall Asriel Batman, right? Of course. But it's all souped up now, and the photos are hilarious. Because now, he just looks like a walking claw, right? An armory. <laughs> It's really effective. I like the reds that they've chosen. I like all the gauntlets. I would say for the most part, they've nailed the costume, right? There might be a few elements here and there where you're like, eh, this should have been painted, blah, blah, blah. I think it's, it's pretty good for a $20 figure. I'll give them that all day. And again, I like the big old claw wings on the back or whatever those were supposed to be back in the day. They just look cool to draw. So he's super armored up. The, the promo photo here is really funny. It's like you get figure and then you get like six blades to, <laughs> to install on him. Again, parts and pieces to add to this, extra hands or an unmasked Jean-Paul Valley, right? And just as a heads up, wink, wink, I wouldn't be surprised if there was also a platinum version for this one, which is a whole other thing. But again... The red one's cool. Blue ones are cool, too. Just saying, this is my number one pick out of the DC Multiverse lineup for this week. For the news, can't wait to have the red Knight's End Jean-Paul Valley Azrael. Looks pretty stellar. So, that will wrap it up for my quick look at all the new DC Multiverse figures are coming out and are available for pre-order down in the description below if you want to grab them. Just again, as a heads up, what is your favorite reveal, if any, from this lineup? McFarlane DC Multiverse, they just keep them coming, don't they? It's like one week after another. Here's a new one, here's a new one, here's a new one. Are you overwhelmed yet? Let's talk about that too. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, when it comes to Batman, no one outmatches Batman with the Batman because Batman, well, he's Batman. And when you Batman, let me know what you're Batman. I'll talk to you guys soon. Batman.